Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just tell me in peace out to the rest of you. The blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media sign. I'm black and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. So, that being said, um, allow me to get straight to this. Um, Mahdi Tijani has a YouTube channel and he's going on with Abu American sometimes. And, um, this is a man who is Muslim and is disseminating red pill information and it's largely to Muslim men. I agree with what he's doing for the most part. I have two points about which I disagree and I'm probably not going to remember one of them tomorrow. The other one I absolutely will remember and it is a serious disagreement. But I'm not here to talk about that particular point. The main point I wanted to tell you all today and I'm especially talking to um, you Muslim gentlemen because you, the black conscious community shares something in common with you. And that is the promotion of um, the divorcee and the single mom. Look, I'm not saying that this is a revelation. I'm saying that the communities share this doctrine in common. In the religion, and this is the point that Mahdi was making, there's not actually a necessity. There's not actually a need uh, there's not a promotion of the divorced single mom. And um, it's promoted though, independently of any revelation in both communities, as if that's something that's going to help the community. And I'm going to tell you that there is a good reason to hold a stigma to divorcees until you can find out evidence that exonerates them. And I'm talking about to the women and not to the men. The first reason that you can do that to the women, and you can't justify doing this to the men, is because, frankly, the women are the ones who fire, the, uh, they pull the trigger most often, and it's not for domestic abuse. Now, Mahdi, you said that there should be some sort of stigma on divorcees, even on yourself, you're not an exception. I beg to differ, sir, you are the exception. I mean, as a guy, but we already know, you're the one that has to pay the dowry. You don't have an interest in just um, hitting and quitting as most Muslim men don't. So in actuality, in the West, because men still pay dowries, but yet it's so easy for the women to get divorces, as a Muslim male, you actually are even less likely. We already know how bad it is in Muslim communities in the West. And since you're not even statistically nearly as likely to file for divorce in the first place than she is, you are immune to the stigma as far as I'm concerned. It's not applicable to you. If the situation were different, my answer would be different. The situation is as it is. I myself have been divorced twice. I stayed with these women until they asked for the divorce. I paid the dowries, um, in neither case was it really that expensive, but I did pay. And I can tell you that I did not uh, leave. They requested it. I was driven away one time. The government was the one at fault in the other time. But I stayed until I was asked for a divorce. That's the end of it. And I'm not the only one. Most of the men in my family, just they generally are monogamous and they stay. They leave when they are asked for a divorce. That's how it usually works. Now we're likely to break up those of us that just have relationships outside of marriage, which I gave up upon becoming Muslim. We are likely to break up for whatever reason we know she would break up with us, but not just haphazardly. We know the things that women don't tolerate. And um, one of the things in my media family was insecurity. If the woman was insecure, you left. And that was not actually something that my dad told us. It was something my mother told us. She would never tolerate this from you. If she's insecure, you leave her to it. There's nothing you can do about it. 
And I, I appreciate my mother telling me that advice. But no, man, you're not to be scrutinized the same way. You're just not. It sounds fair that you would be, but look, what, did she pay you a dowry? I mean, your wives may have settled for low dowries to marry you, but did any of them pay you a dowry? No, they didn't. You're immune to scrutiny. You're just being nice and you're, you're being fair um, as best you can by not exempting yourself. I understand that. I'm going to step forward and say, no, you're, you're exempt for, for now. In this situation, you're exempt. But in any case, uh, I want the rest of you to understand his explanation that is very, actually very, very helpful, and that is this. It's promoted that you, the childless, oftentimes virginal man, marry the single mom and divorcee, or divorcing mom combined. But the thing is that there is nothing specific, nothing specified about an extra reward for doing that. The extra reward specified is for the widow and the orphan. Now somebody once said, well, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only married Aisha as a virgin and never married anybody else as a virgin. You know what? I'm not really sure what the reasons were, but he did recommend for other men to marry virgins. Now, he, as a prophet, had to marry for religious and political reasons as well as personal. But other men have to wear, marry for personal and religious reasons, not so much political along with that. He did recommend it, marrying the virgin. Widows and orphans, sure, taking care of them, but not so much the divorcees that was something you could you you could pick take that on a case-by-case -case basis but if you are a man that has never been married i'm gonna tell you don't do it because uh they're gonna run circles around you they'll do it just because they realize you're not as experienced and they can't respect that it's sad but they can't the widow's different Anyway, um, that's about the gist of what I wanted to say in this case. And I appreciate him giving the explanation and, the, and articulating it that way. Do not let anybody come to you anymore telling you that it's a good thing for you to do, uh, to go out and marry specifically the divorcee and take care of uh, single moms, kids. Don't let anybody come to you that with it, come to you with that anymore. Ask them if they're talking about a widow and orphans. Specify that. And when they say, well, the husband is, the ex-husband is still alive, and say that's not a widow when they're not orphans. That doesn't apply. So since that does not apply and there's no extra reward for her, I'll go ahead and marry someone for whom there's more of a reward right now in this life. I'm inexperienced. I'm supposed to be. I'm going to marry someone who uh, is a clean slate. I ain't pair bonded with nobody. I'm gonna marry someone that ain't pair bonded with anybody. I'm gonna run up in someone. I'm gonna run up in somebody with the tight tight. That's what you gotta do. Sometimes you may have to get graphic with some people that come to you with this blue pill simp stuff. Now, if you are a divorced single father, then you would better know how to vet her anyway. And even then, I might say to you, you know what, still, did you request the divorce? Did you request your own divorce? Because if you didn't, you probably still uh, have every right to say to her, no, I'm still gonna marry someone with a clean slate. Because last time when I got divorced, she requested it. And in, statistically speaking, you are unlikely to have been abusive for her to divorce you. Just she fell out of love because she could. I think that you get the idea and thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out, Aslam Lakum, and black heterosexual, non-select male power, just because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.